title tonight's teaching, What You Think Matters. What You Think Matters. And I'm in the book of Ezekiel tonight. I'm reading Ezekiel chapter 37 and I'm reading verses 1 through 3. Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 through 3. And the word of the Lord says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Amen. So for those of you just tuning in, I just read Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 3. And as I read these verses earlier today, the question that God posed to Ezekiel really stood out to me. Now, I've read this passage multiple times, as many of you have. But the question that God posed to Ezekiel stood out to me. God asked Ezekiel if he thought the dry bones could live. God didn't say to him, these dry bones could live. God said, son of man, can these bones live? Right? And I started to press into the question. I was asking the Lord, you know, why he cared about or why he was interested in what Ezekiel thought. Like, what did it matter if he thought the bones could live or not? And what the Lord revealed is that what Ezekiel thought about the situation was important to God because our thoughts, people of God, affect our faith. Hear me tonight. Our thoughts affect our faith. If you don't think something is possible, then you won't have the faith to believe that it can happen. So God asked Ezekiel, what do you think? Do you think these dry bones can live? Because what we think affects our faith. And because we speak in accordance with what we believe, it is important for us to be clear on what it is that we think. It is important for us to be clear on what it is that we believe because we are going to speak from that place. Matthew chapter 12 verse 34 says, it is from the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So in other words, our words reflect what we think and believe in our hearts. So when you find that you're talking to people and they're very, very negative, they're always speaking the negative. It is really a reflection of their heart. It's a heart issue because the Bible says we speak from the abundance of our hearts. Come on, somebody. So what we think affects how we, what, uh, our ability to believe. It affects our faith, right? Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what we think about our current situations is important to God because our thoughts influence our faith and our thoughts influence our actions. So God wanted to know from Ezekiel, from him himself, what do you think about these dry bones? And Ezekiel did not give God his own opinion. He simply says, whatever you say is what is. Right? That was Ezekiel's response. He said, oh Lord God, you know. So in other words, if you say the dry bones can live, Lord, then I believe what you say. Whatever you say is, you know, only you know if these dry bones can live. He did not give God his opinion. He responded and said, whatever you say about it, God, is what it is. Whatever you think about it is what it is. I don't want you to miss that tonight. Because many of us probably would have responded with all the reasons we think the dry bones could not live. Well, Lord, I don't know because they've been here a long time. And well, how are they going to live, God? I don't see how this is even possible. It's a whole valley of them. It's not like it's just one. And who left them here? We would have all these questions. We would need all these d details to be able to give God an answer. We probably would have responded with every reason possible as to why we did not think the dry bones could live. But in verse 9 of Ezekiel chapter 37, God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the breath. He said prophesy to the breath. In Ezekiel 37 verses 9 and 10, Ezekiel goes on to say, Also, God said to me, prophesy to the breath. 
prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So verse 10, Ezekiel said, So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Come on, somebody. Ezekiel prophesied as God commanded. He did not speak to the situation based on what he thought. He did not speak to the situation based on his opinion or based on what happened the last time or based on the track record. He prophesied as he was commanded. He said what God said to say. Come on. He said what God said say and he saw a change in the situation. And many of us tonight are inserting our own faithless opinions about the dry bone situations in our lives instead of saying what God said. We are looking at the dry bone situations and we are concluding, we are speaking to it from what we see. We are speaking to it from what we feel or from even what other people may say or other people may feel. Some of us are speaking to our situations. We're prophesying the wrong thing to our situations based on somebody else's faith or based on what somebody else thinks about it. Amen. So we are inserting our own faithless opinions instead of saying what God said. And we will always find what God said in his word. If you are going through a situation and you don't understand exactly how it's going to resolve itself or what's going to come of it, find a scripture. There's always a scripture that applies to what you're dealing with. Find a scripture and apply it to the situation that you're going through and say what God said. It takes discipline. This is a season and we started talking about this in one of our recent prayer calls. I don't know if it was Tuesday or if it was last Thursday, but it is a season of discipline. We have to discipline ourselves to only say what God said. Amen. Amen. So what do you think or believe about the dry bones in your life? What do you think? What do you believe about the dry bones situations in your life? What did God say about the matter in his word? The Bible says when Ezekiel got done speaking the word of God to the dead, dry situation, it became an exceedingly great army. I don't want you to miss that tonight. The bones were dry they were scattered and separated. And after he was done saying what God told him to say, the bones became an exceedingly great army. Something that was dead and dry now gained strength, now had movement, now had momentum. Come on, somebody. After Ezekiel said what God said, the Lord asked him, first of all, what do you think about the situation? And then God told him what to say to the situation. And I believe tonight, people of God, that the Lord is asking us the same question he asked Ezekiel. Can these dry bones live? Based on what you are going through in this moment, the Lord is asking the very same question. Can these dry bones live? What do you think about your situation? Because what you think matters. It affects your faith. It affects your confession. And it affects your actions. So I want you tonight, people of God, to think about that situation in your life that feels dry and dead, that has had no movement or growth in a long time, that situation that seems stuck and stagnant, that situation that seems beyond repair. I want you to get that situation in your mind. And I want you to be honest with God about whether or not you believe it can live again, whether or not you think it can live again. I want you to keep that before you, even as we go to God in prayer, because what you think matters. And a lot of us feel like the situations we're in, you know, it's God's fault. Like, okay, this isn't changing. I keep praying about it and I don't see any change. Why is God not coming through for me? Well, what do you think about your situation? If you already think it can't be resolved, then maybe that is what's hindering a manifestation of what God wants to do. Come on. So I want you to get that situation in your mind and I want you to be honest with God about what you believe in this moment and what you think about it in this moment as we go to God in prayer. Amen. Father, we thank you for this word tonight. We give you the glory, God. We give you the honor. 
Yes, Father, we give you the praise. We magnify you for everything that you are doing, even in this moment, Holy Spirit. I really sense your resurrection power on this call tonight. And we just want to activate our faith to believe you for what seems impossible. We want to activate and stir up our faith tonight to believe you for what seems too far gone. You told us that 2019 is the year of the impossible. It is the year of the manifested acts of the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, God, we come before you. We repent for our doubt. We repent for our unbelief. We repent for thinking negatively about our circumstances. We repent for speaking the wrong confessions over our circumstances. We repent tonight for speaking our own opinions over the dry bones in our lives instead of speaking your word. Many of us have rushed and made rash uh, 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 statements and rash comments and rash prophecies over our lives and over our circumstances instead of taking the time and the discipline to search your word for a scripture, for a promise, for a principle that we could stand on. So tonight, Father, we pray that you will deal with every trace of unbelief in our hearts tonight in the name of Jesus. Every trace of doubt, every trace of negativity, we ask you to root it up now, God, in the name of Jesus. Break off every spirit of Nazareth, every spirit of unbelief. Break it off tonight, God, and cause us to believe what you are saying even in this moment. Father, I pray that you will help us to believe what you are saying even in this moment. Holy Spirit, thank you. I really believe even now that you are examining every dry bone situation that we have at the forefront of our minds and you are resuscitating our faith. You are resuscitating our hope in your power. And we thank you tonight for the move that is even happening even on this call. Your word says that we should hold fast to our confidence in you because it promises great reward for those who refuse to let go of their confidence in you. Your word says there is great reward for those who refuse to, to stop believing that this is possible, that you are able to transform their situations, to change the situations that they're in. Your word says there is great reward. God, you even said in Jeremiah 32, behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? I feel God that there is even a pattern tonight where you keep asking, us questions, not because you don't know the answer, but because it is, it is important to you what we think. What we think matters. You said in Jeremiah 32, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? You want us to tell you what we think in our lives is too hard for you. Where are we limiting you? Where are the situ What situations do we feel like God just can't move in this God, you even said in Matthew chapter 19, I believe it was, you said with man, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things, all things are glory. All things are possible. And we are in a season of all things. We are in a season of the impossible. Nothing is impossible in this season. Father, even when we started out the prayer call in February this year, you gave us that you shared a testimony of the woman that was able to bring forth a child after having a hysterectomy. No womb, yet you caused her to get pregnant and you caused her to bring forth a child. We are in a season of the impossible. We are in a season of all things, all things being possible with you. So Father, we come to you tonight as the God of the impossible. As the God of all flesh, and we petition you concerning every dry bone situation in our lives tonight, in the name of Jesus. Somebody's marriage feels like a dry bone situation tonight. Glory. Somebody's health situation feels too far gone. Somebody's financial situation feels like the valley of dry bones tonight. Come on, God. Somebody's relationships feel dry there's so many different uh, uh, manifestations of dry bone situations in our lives in this season. 
But Father, whatever it is tonight, we say like Ezekiel, only you know what can come of it. We do not pronounce anything over our lives that you have not said. Glory. We do not pronounce anything over our lives that you have not said. But we say like Ezekiel, only you know what can come of this situation. And so we choose to trust you tonight and to say only what you say in the name of Jesus. Because our opinions have never raised the dead glory. Our opinions have never restored sight to the blind. Our opinions have never set the captives free. It is your word that has the power to transform the situations that we are facing. Our opinions can never change any matter in our lives. So we prophesy to the breath tonight. Glory to God. We prophesy to the breath tonight. Like Ezekiel, we command the breath to come from the four winds and to breathe life into the dry and dead situation in our lives. In the name of Jesus, Ruach, breath of God, we ask you to breathe now over every circumstance that seems dry, over every circumstance that seems dead. Glory, even as you called Lazarus to come forth out of the grave, we call forth our relationships tonight. We call forth our marriages tonight in the name of Jesus. We call forth our healing. We call forth our deliverance. We call forth our financial breakthrough. We call Call forth every situation that has been bound by impossibility tonight. We say come forth in the name of Jesus. By the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Things that died because they were not sufficiently watered. Things that died because we did not tend to them. Let there be a mass resurrection tonight God. In the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a mass resurrection God. We will be mindful in this season to only say what you say. We prophesy without even knowing it. Everything we speak and decree and declare over our lives is a prophecy and we are speaking and decreeing and declaring some of the wrong things and we are seeing a manifestation of the wrong prophecy. And so Father, we decree and declare tonight that we will say only what you say. We will say only what you say. So we ask you to do it tonight, Holy Spirit. Glory. Hallelujah, God. We ask you to do it tonight, Holy Spirit, like a mighty rushing wind. Glory. Blow and breathe upon every dead situation in our lives. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Blow upon every situation. Breathe into every situation. Thank you, God. The Holy Spirit is even revealing that some of us have pronounced things dead in our lives that are not dead. They're just asleep. Glory. We have pronounced them dead. Situations we have walked away from. Situations we have stopped uh, uh, putting our energy and our effort into because we have wrongly pronounced them dead. And we have had the funeral. We have put them in the ground. But the Holy Spirit is even saying they are not dead. They are just asleep. And so breath of God we ask you to blow upon every dread, dry situation and every dead situation in our lives tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Somebody is saying tonight, even like the Israelites said, that our bones are dry and our hope is lost and we are cut off. But Father, you said that you would open up the graves. You said that you would cause us to come up from our graves. You are the magnified grave robber in this season. You don't allow us to stay trapped or stuck in situations when you have come for our freedom. So Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. For the breath of the Holy Spirit that is blowing in circumstances even now. Blowing in situations even now. Thank you Holy Spirit. The Lord is even saying for some of you for some relationships that ended prematurely. For some relationships that you thought were dead. You're going to begin to see some movement. Thank you Holy Spirit. You're going to begin to see some movement. For some of you things that you have tried in the past that seemed like they were uh, uh, blocked up or stopped up. You're going to begin to see some movement. And I hear the caution in the Spirit. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, be open to revisiting some stuff. Be open to revisiting some stuff, people of God. Sometimes we can make our minds up and say, I'm done. I'm not going back to this situation. I'm not re-engaging in that matter. I'm not going to try again in this area. But the Holy Spirit is saying, be open in this season to revisit some stuff. And even as I'm hearing that, I'm hearing the Lord say, also be discerning because the enemy will also try to bring up things and make you think that this 
this is one of the things that God is saying you should revisit. So Father, I pray even now that you will stir up even the gift of discerning of spirits, that we'll be able to identify clearly what we should revisit and what we should let let stay dead. Thank you, God. Help us to identify what it is that you are resurrecting in this season and what the enemy is trying to pump life into to make us feel like this is of you when it is supposed to remain dead. Glory to God. So Father, we pray tonight that you will let our dead situations, truly the ones that, that you want to resurrect, let them truly come forth like an exceedingly great army. Glory by the power and the authority of your name. In the name of Jesus, we do not count anything out tonight that you are still breathing on. Glory. We do not count out anything tonight that you are still breathing on. We don't pronounce anything dead that still has a heartbeat, that you are still pumping breath into tonight in the name of Jesus. For those of you on Periscope, I want you to partner with me in this prayer. I believe there is an emoji that is of a man. It's a blue emoji and it's a man speaking. And I want you to find that emoji and I want you to put that up. And that is going to represent in the spirit, the breath of God blowing over circumstances in your lives, blowing over dead situations, blowing over dry situations. Yes, thank you. Blowing over those situations that you thought were dead. Join with me and, and, and let's partner together even in that. We do not count anything out. We don't count anything out that you are still breathing on tonight in the glorious name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor even as the breath of God is even blowing, even on this call, blowing in circumstances that we didn't even know you were still working on. Your breath is still blowing in this season. And Father, we thank you and we come in agreement with everything that you are doing. We come in agreement with everything that you are doing. And Father, we say that we believe you. We say that we believe you in response to your question of whether or not the dry bones can live. We say, Father, whatever it is that you think about it, we are in agreement. We don't insert our opinion. We don't insert our faithless opinions, but we come in agreement with what you have said. We come in agreement with what you plan to do. So God, I thank you for resurrection power, glory. I thank you for resurrection power. And I thank you that it is being manifested in our lives. Thank you, God. The Holy Spirit even just said that there for some of you, there are loved ones that have, uh, uh, have backslided. They're in a backslidden state. They have left the faith. They have turned their backs on God. They have walked away. And the resurrection breath of God is breathing life into them now. And you're going to begin to see some movement. You're going to begin to see them coming back to church. You're going to begin to have some of them reach out to you to ask you, if you know, for prayer, to ask you to keep them in prayer, to ask you to pray with them even on the phone. There's going to be some movement, people of God. There is movement, glory, happening in the spirit in this season. Do not count anything out that God still has his breath on. That is the warning in this season. Do not count anything out that God still has his breath on. Do not pronounce dead things that God is still calling and breathing life into in this season in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I thank you. And I just release this word over your people tonight. I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. And I thank you for your uh, strengthening and stirring up our faith to believe you once more for what seems impossible. We are in the year of the impossible, the manifested acts of Holy Spirit. So we don't take anything lightly and we don't believe that there's nothing you can do. We believe that there's that you can do all things. We believe that nothing shall be impossible for you. So Father, we press into that and I pray that you confirm this word even as your people People go throughout the day as they go throughout the week I pray God that you confirm this word in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word spoken tonight be established in the name of Jesus you said that you are watching over your word to perform it and I pray that you will do that in the lives of your people so I cover them under your blood God from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet I thank you for the mighty rushing wind some of you are even going to literally feel a tangible breeze 
Thank you, God. Some of you are literally going to feel a tangible breeze. You're not going to be anywhere where breeze is blowing, but you're going to literally feel a tangible breeze and that will be your sign. God is even proving himself in this season. There are things that are happening that we cannot explain because we are in a season of the supernatural and his breath is blowing in situations that you thought were dead. So God, I thank you and I ask you to glorify yourself in our lives. I ask you to prove yourself even in this you said that we should put you in remembrance of your word you said prove me now so father we put you in remembrance of your word tonight and as the scripture says we will not give you any rest until you accomplish what you have said in the name of jesus so god cover your people under the blood tonight i bless them from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet i bless them going out i bless them coming in i bless them in every area of their lives tonight in the name of jesus so father Father, I pray that you cover them as they go through the weekend. Keep their minds and hearts stayed on you and continue to encourage them, even in matters of faith. I pray for your continued encouragement, God, in the glorious name of Jesus. So, God, we love you tonight. We love you with all our hearts. We love you and we continue to say from Tuesday night that we need you. We need you more than we need our next breath. And we just give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory, the wind of God, the breath of God. We thank you, God. People of God, I pray your life, your hearts were blessed, encouraged, stirred by this word tonight. What you think about your situation matters to God. What you think about your situation matters to God. He wants to know if you believe that it is possible. Amen. So keep your faith up, people of God. Continue to believe God to do the impossible in your life in this season. And look out for ways that he is manifesting his resurrection power. I love you guys so much. I am praying for you. Continue to keep the midnight cry prayer call lifted in prayer. And by the grace of God, we'll be back on the prayer call again on Tuesday at midnight Eastern Standard Time, 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you guys.